church on this lovely morning. And, uh, we're going to go out now, get in our cars, and go get some folks to come on in. <laughs> Maybe they'll show up here. <clears throat> like Brother Mike used to say, you might want to move to the front for the 500 that are coming in a little bit later. Make room for them. If we had 500 coming in, we wouldn't know what to do. But uh, before I forget, if you need a record of your contributions <clears throat> so that you can have it for the IRS, if they come after you, then uh, uh, tell Bill or Pat, you know, get you one. <clears throat> um, you know, it's February already. Time goes by fast, doesn't it? Amen. <laughs> Did the old folks ever tell you that the older you got, the faster it went? <laughs> if you found that to be true, you'll be admitting you're an old folk if you say <laughs> 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 uh, But I found out it was true. It, it sure seems like it goes by quicker and quicker. But um, I am grateful. That the Lord told Israel, and it applies to us, in Isaiah 46, verses 3 and 4, Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I will made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. I like that. I like that. Amen. <clears throat> so if you experience this getting old thing a little bit, then you could probably identify to some extent with three brothers who lived together. One was 96, one was 94, and one was 92. And the 96-year-old decided to take a bath, and so he drew himself a bath, and he got one foot in, and he kind of paused, and he yelled down to the 94-year-old, said, was I getting into the bathtub or out? <laughs> and then the 94-year-old said, I'll come up and help you. And the 94-year-old started up the stairs, and he got about the middle of the stairway, and he stopped. He said, was I going up the stairs or down? <laughs> and the 92-year-old sitting in the kitchen and having a cup of coffee, sitting there at the table, and he thought to himself, whew. I find wood. I hope I never end up losing my mind like those two. He said, I'll come up and help you both. I just got to check and see who's at the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> we have to laugh about it. <clears throat> it's too true. That's why. That's why. It's true. Don't knock her down. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Everything is good. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you do never leave us nor forsake us if we know you as our Lord and Savior. You promise us that all things work together for good, even if they're bad things, for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Thank you that you care about us when we're young, when we're old, from the cradle to the grave, and on for eternity. What wonderful, blessed promises. Help us to grasp a hold of those and hold on tight. No, no matter what winds and waves are knocking up against us in this world. <coughs> Lord, we, uh, we need to be helped and comforted and healed. Ask that so that we might be useful to you and service to you during our brief pilgrimage in this world. We want to praise you this morning. We ask you to receive our worship and bless each one who has come together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's sing praises to the Lord together. All right, we need some singers. We'll come up and help us out here. Amen. Yeah, pretty simple song, but this song that we've done before, we can't forget. Okay, we've got three singers right here. Okay, all right, let's sing. Oh. 
Still going to get that Jane from Sunday. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> she ever stays well. She hurt herself. Right? Okay. <clears throat> well, while I'm now. <laughs> For what? For what she said here in the song circle. She might want some supper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Did you turn how to have that? He's seven years older than I am, so. <laughs> I am the younger one. She's <laughs> always been so much younger, I haven't been worried about smaller or old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we made it 45 years. Um, I'm thinking the chances are getting good. <laughs> All right, if you'll turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, just one verse, one wonderful verse that uh, is a great blessing. It's great to think about the things that will be in heaven. And we could, we could certainly be profited by spending a lot of time talking about what will be in heaven. But this morning I feel led to talk about what won't be in heaven. Because that's a blessing too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says here in Revelation 21.4, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Thank you, Father, for the things that will pass away, the things that won't be anymore when we get to heaven. Help us make sure that we're going to get there through Jesus Christ our Lord. By grace through faith and the wonderful offering that he gave for us on the cross and his victory over death through the resurrection. The Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The former things will have passed away. Not the good things, the bad things. All the bad things will be passed away. And even the good things will be purified of any taint, any shadow that might overhang them. Because even the good things in this life are not perfectly good. Partly because we can't even perfectly appreciate the good. Because of our cursed problems. Our bodies that are corruptible and mortal. If you'd like to be on the prayer list for sicknesses, <laughs> old age, problems, you're not going to like heaven because there's not going to be any prayer list. <laughs> not going to be anybody to pray for. No sinners that need prayer. <clears throat> no saints that are going through troubles and problems and need prayer. Don't be a praise list. We can praise list everybody. <laughs> and uh, we can praise God for all the wonderful things he's done for you and for you and for you and for you. And he, we can praise God for a thousand years for all the wonderful things he's done for us personally and for everybody else that's there. Pray, there won't be any lack of things to praise God for. But you know, there won't be any lost sinners, and there won't be any sickness, and there won't be any injury. Do you know there are 200 different kinds of cancer? But in heaven, there won't be any. None. None. I tell you. I understand why medical students often start thinking that they have every disease that they study. <laughs> there are 100,000 different diseases in the world. It's a wonder we stay around as long as we do. But in heaven, there won't be any diseases, sicknesses, illnesses. 
Wow. If you like being sick, you won't like that. <clears throat> Let's go on. Look at the things that are mentioned in this verse. No sorrow. No crying. No tears. <clears throat> this world tends to be a place of a lot of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? You know, always, everything goes great. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Happy days, huh? <laughs> <clears throat> Um, it's a universal experience sorrow Jeremiah 20 verse 18 Jeremiah is, was preaching the gospel preaching the good news to Israel God's word to Israel <clears throat> and the only thing that resulted from it is they tried to kill him mm -hmm. stuck him in a hole in the ground I mean not good. Hope you guys aren't planning on that. But anyway, <laughs> why did I come forth from the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? Isaiah 15, 3. It's talking about Israel under judgment. In their streets they will clothe themselves with sackcloth on the tops of their houses, and in their streets everyone will wail and weeping bitterly. <laughs> Philippians 2.27, when Epaphroditus was very sick, he was a godly friend of Paul's, and, and the Apostle Paul says, for indeed he was sick, almost unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Now you know something about <laughs> sorrow. I know you do. Everybody does, because it's a common thing in this world. But this is the Apostle Paul. He was an apostle. He was blessed by God. He had <coughs> gone to the third heaven, either personally or in a, in a vision, but he had heard things that he couldn't repeat. It was so wonderful. He <coughs> had been taught by Jesus as Jesus appeared to him. I mean, this... But he said... If this dear friend of mine, this dear Christian brother, had not been healed from the sickness, I would have had sorrow upon sorrow. So you, as a Christian, no matter how close you're walking to the Lord, that doesn't mean that you're never going to have sorrow. And, or that it's wrong for you to feel sorrow. Because there's things that are worthy of sorrow. I mean, I... I believe we should not sorrow as those who have no hope. doesn't say that we won't sorrow, but we won't sorrow as those who it's the end of the line and there's no hope and there's nothing. No, our sorrow is way limited by the love of God and by the truth of God and by the promises of God. <clears throat> but you still have sorrow. You, you know, um, when, when people at funerals feel like they can't be the least bit sorrowful. Uh, mm. I, I think that's they're, they're faking it. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> um, <coughs> my wife dead. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. <coughs> no, I mean, you know, even if you're happy for her being in heaven, if you're not happy, you don't have her by your side anymore <coughs> in, in this world. You know, so anyway, I think some of that is a little bit put on, but <clears throat> we should rejoice at the same time there's sorrow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a common thing here, and we go through it, sickness, pain, death, uh, relationship, bullying, harassment, undermining, misjudging, backbiting, persecuting, deceiving, uh, natural disasters, man-made disasters, financial ruin, wars, relationship problems, especially the romantic kind, regret, mm -hmm and many other things that bring sorrow. And we know it, and uh, sorry for reminding you of it, but the fact is that uh, it is a universal experience, and they're very real, and sometimes they're very bad. Uh, Jesus, in John 16, talks about this <coughs> in some detail, and uh, starting at verse 1, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, 
the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Mm -hmm. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus says, I know. I know it gives you great sorrow to know that I'm going away. I know it gives you great sorrow to know that I'm going to die on the cross, even though they didn't accept that for a long time. But he says, everything is to your advantage. All things do work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. There are troubles that we go through, but we have to remember that God will use them all for good in the end. It's going to work. And then he goes on in verse 20. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. <laughs> Therefore, you know you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. So, he says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, there's sorrow, but your sorrow is going to be turned into joy. And it'll be so great and such joy that you won't remember. It won't bother you about what has gone before. Imagine no sorrow. Can you imagine no sorrow? <laughs> Nothing that makes you feel sad. Nothing that makes you feel disappointed, discouraged, disillusioned. What people do to us is usually a thing that makes us feel worse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but no more sorrow, no more crying, no more tears. Former things have passed away. The fact that certain things are not going to be in heaven is, is a very encouraging thing. Because those things mm -hmm. are very sad and very bad. <clears throat> no sorrow, no crying, no tears, no pain in heaven. <clears throat> pain in a sense is God's gift to say, well, you know, the physical body, you have to have pain or you won't realize that you just broke your ankle, you got gout, you just ran your head into a wall or whatever. <laughs> but, <clears throat> so yeah, it's got a temporary um, good purpose in this corruptible cursed world for the bodies that we are in. But a lot of people live in chronic pain. Mm -hmm. In fact, they say a hundred million people in the United States live in chronic pain. That's a bunch of folks. A hundred million, that's mm -hmm. more than a fourth of the people in the country is, I understand. <laughs> it's chronic pain. Uh, not, not a fun pain. Have to live with it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So the Lord will use sufferings in a Christian's life for good purposes. I mean, he uses everything for good purposes. But that doesn't make it fun. And some of you have chronic pains of various kinds. Some of you can't imagine being totally pain-free. <laughs> I don't think any of us can imagine being totally pain-free. People start going, oh, wow, yeah, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. 
it ain't gonna be a big problem. But uh, you know, I know <coughs> one of our dear friends, uh, a couple of Coellas, uh, Faye Coella uh, and Scott, and uh, they help us a lot up in New York. They come up with mission trips from Alabama, and they would help us. And, and they're just great people. And he, he works for Lockheed Martin as an engineer. And he made good money. And she was some kind of therapist. <coughs> so made good money. And they gave fantastic amounts of money to the Lord's work and to missions. And then when he retired, they have grandchildren, they have children and grandchildren, and, and uh, have a nice country home in Alabama. And what do they do? Spend time with their children and grandchildren. No. They've spent the last two years in Serbia as missionaries. Mm -hmm. And now they're going over for another two years in Serbia as missionaries. These are just regular, regular people. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has arthritis that's so bad that if she doesn't take this really powerful arthritis medicine, <laughs> if she just reaches up on the shelf and, and gets a glass, tears will run down her face because of the pain. And, uh, but, you know, they serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm sure God has used it to deepen her walk. Mm -hmm. The pain is an enemy. It's very <coughs> difficult for many. And uh, a big problem. Um, well, as a Christian, you shouldn't have any pain, should you? The Lord should take it all away, right? <laughs> Just you say, Jesus, come into my heart. Everything's wonderful. <laughs> Nothing hurts. So that's what we all, I guess, in some ways want. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. In fact, you may have more pain. That's true. I know that's not a big thrill, but Matthew 20, 27, and 28, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. This is the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, Jesus said we need to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and follow him. So being a Christian doesn't take away these things. But heaven will take away these things. Yeah. That's when we will experience the fulfillment of all of the wonderful promises. This is basic training. This, this is going through the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. This is war. When we get to heaven, it's going to be party time. It's going to be the relief from all that we've had to carry while we're here. And some people have to carry a lot, but he'll take care of it, and he'll make it good. There's no purpose for pain in heaven, and there's no place for pain in heaven. No pain at all. Now, if you really like pain, I mean, really enjoy it. Great. <laughs> Actually, I think some people do. Remember, oh, evil can evil. <laughs> Actually, I always thought it was evil. It's evil, e v e l. That's, that was his first name. <clears throat> but oh, evil can evil. He had to love pain. In one season of jumping his motorcycle, he broke four hundred thirty-one bones in one season. How many bones we got? <laughs> I forget the biology. But he broke most of them. <laughs> he found some new ones for you. I don't know. <laughs> but if you do that, you got to love pain. You really do. Some people don't like it. I don't. <clears throat> um, Brother, Brother Terry Rhodes was talking to us <laughs> after one of the, uh, one of the uh, singings they had over at their church of Phoebe. And uh, he was telling about his football career. That boy has broken about as many as evil can evil. <laughs> He's collarbone 34 times, shoulder. But, you know, he's not that big a guy. And he played in college. And then he played semi-pro just to play, just to break things. <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> I'm a marshmallow. I don't want to. <laughs> I like to break things. Broke a few, but yeah, if you like pain, won't like heaven. 
There's no pain there, no sorrow, no crying, no tears, no death. I want to remind you of something. Death is an enemy. Mm -hmm. It's not a friend. You know, they talk about the cycle of life. All the cycle of life. You know, the cycle ends in death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I look at it as a cycle of death. Because, look, death is a... It's not good that your mom died. It's not good that your daddy died. It's not good that your cousin died and your mother. And it's not good that your sister or your brother. It's not, death is not a good thing. These pews used to be filled with people who have physically died. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. In heaven, there's not going to be any death. No. No more dying. <clears throat> No more funeral. <clears throat> no more funeral homes. No more cemeteries. Got to put some people out of work. You got no sickness. You got no doctors. You got no nurses. Anyway, but <clears throat> no death. How good is that? How good is that? The Bible says that <clears throat> it's going to be you get seventy years. Uh -oh. <laughs> 80 if by strength 80 some of you might have got a little past that <laughs> <coughs> and then we fly away it's uh, it's brief this life James says it's like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes the only thing we've known. So it's kind of in this world the only thing we've known. So even though it's kind of rough, we hang on to it. We're good. <laughs> Wanna hang around. <clears throat> I'm persuaded that one second in heaven that we wouldn't go back here for nothing. Love your money. <clears throat> yeah, okay. They're fine back there. Make sure they're safe and bring them on up. But uh, <clears throat> because death is the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. The reason for death is sin. It's a bad thing. It's the last enemy. And in 1 Corinthians 15.24-26, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Yeah. It's going down. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Death is a bad thing, and praise God, it's going to go away. It's not leaving anymore. You know, you ladies really got us guys. If you look at death statistics for every age group, a bunch more guys die in every age group until you get past 80. And then more of the ladies die because the men already died. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> Nobody left to die. <laughs> yeah, and, and we could go on and talk about the reasons for that because we have such a rough life because the ladies are so mean to us. <laughs> but we won't get into that. That's probably better. <clears throat> yeah. Death stalks us. Mm -hmm. Stuns us. And sorrows us. <clears throat> Hezekiah was one of the best kings that Israel ever had. But boy, when he was told that he was going to die, uh, he was very upset about it. In Isaiah 38, it says, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how have I how I've walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good and is right. And he wept bitterly, and he begged God to give him more years in this world, and God gave him 15 more years. And during that 15 years, he had a son that was the worst king that 
ever came down the pike in Judah. And during that time, he did the dumbest thing he'd ever done and told Babylon all about and showed him all the riches of mm -hmm. the kingdom. Um, but here was a great king, but he still he didn't want to face death. You know? <coughs> and, uh, now, and it sneaks up on people. Jesus wept for Lazarus and his sisters. He was always about to resurrect him from the dead. Mm -hmm. um, in, in John 11, 35, shortest verse in the Bible, the one that everybody wants to memorize, Jesus <laughs> wept. <laughs> Sad. And this thing with Kobe Bryant, I mean, it was like, everybody's shocked, especially when young people die. And especially when famous young people die. I mean, the guy was this superstar legend in, in basketball, professional basketball. And his 13-year-old daughter was murdered. And seven other dear people in this helicopter is gone. Mm -hmm. It's an enemy. And there's not going to be any more of it. Done. It's going to be over, gone, done, <clears throat> never anymore. Last enemy to be destroyed is death. Sorrow and pain and death, gone. Sorrow and pain and death, gone. How great. How great is that? Go for that. Imagine just walking into heaven. <clears throat> uh, this tremendous tenor singer that used to be a, an associate pastor at a church that Bonnie and I were involved in. Um, just a great little bald-headed guy. But, uh, boy, he could sing. Mm -hmm. he, he could do it. And there's this, this song, when, he, when engulfed by the terrors of tempestuous seas, and the waves about you roll, at the end of sin and darkness is eternity. Though fear and conflict, fear and conflict fill your soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory. And finding it all. <clears throat> if he was going right up there. But, <laughs> wow, I mean, just think of it. Well, but for 10,000 years, we'll just be jumping around. <laughs> we'll just be filled with such amazement and such joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Until I told him. If I was in a cemetery and I rose from the grave, I'd want the Lord to wait to take me up for a while so I could kick over some gravestones. <laughs> Emphasize the victory of it all. It's going to be good. It's going to be good because there's a lot of good things there, but it's going to be particularly good because there's a lot of bad things that aren't going to be there. But there's one entity that needs to be there. Definitely needs to be there. You know what that is? You. Mm -hmm. You need to be there. If there's any chance that anybody in here today, in this massive crowd, does not have absolute assurance that you're going to be there, and Paul said, I know whom I have believed in and persuaded that he is able <coughs> to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. He said, I know I'm going to be there. I don't take it for granted, but I know I'm going to be there because of him. Make sure that you know that you're going to be in on this mm -hmm. wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Bye, yes, with me. Wonderful day. Father, I pray that if there's anybody who's a young person who's thinking about it, you know they need to know the Lord, but they're young and they know they're going to be around for 
comes with emotions and they're serious about being connected to church and all, but and it's hindering a need for many folks. They never really humbled themselves before the little child and cried out to you to save them from their sins and give them a home in heaven. And we pray this morning that if anybody in this group who doesn't know you, that they will come and bow before you this morning and just pray a simple prayer. Confessing their sins and asking you and believing you to come into their life and save them and give them a home in heaven. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me?
whichever bulletin board I put it on, I think it's that one. <coughs> we'll have to come up with a goal for that. Our last two offerings, a goal of 500, we made it. And a goal of 700, we made it. And so maybe 100,000. <laughs> we might be getting over. Is there any there? All right. I've been meaning to find more prayer partners to uh, pray for me on Monday morning, so I'm traveling to start on Tuesday, North 32nd Monday, so can you find people who want to volunteer under your pamphlet to show you what you're praying for? Because um, last week I did have a girl in the Bible study sitting next to me who was from Saudi Arabia, and they asked her, have you ever read the Bible before? She says, no. They said, have you ever seen a Bible before? She said, no. So that's the people that we're reaching are people who have never read or seen the Bible before. <clears throat> and it's, it's really cool because only a few are English experts compared to them. <laughs> you know, being intimidated, you speak the language and have had for all these years. So you got the advantage if, if you ever... Uh, get a chance to come over. I'll, I'll probably go with Bonnie. There's a guy that wants one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation. You just go, you talk to him. And see, you got the advantage, too, that you're going to be able to make them talk Southern. <laughs> right. <clears throat> I think Carl, Carl must have learned his English he doesn't talk Southern, I don't know. <laughs> <I'm still working. laughs> Speaks Swedish. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> how many languages do you speak, Carl? Seven. Seven languages. Wow. Oh, wow. We're lucky we speak one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just amazed when somebody can do that. <clears throat> but anyway, other prayer needs this morning that we. Which daughter is that? Penny. Penny. <coughs> Any others? Okay, then. <clears throat> Let's all stand and be dismissed. <clears throat> I know some of you may be excited about the Super Bowl <laughs> tonight, but we're having the Super Bible Study <laughs> at 5, and if you won't miss much of the Super Bowl, run over. <clears throat> all right, let's bow our heads and Remember Karen's daughter Penny, and she is still having respiratory problems. A lot of other people suffering with pneumonia and bronchitis and what have you. And thankful for God's mercy in keeping us from getting that sort of thing. <clears throat> and if you got any prayer for those with the coronavirus, and make sure. You don't drink any of that Corona beer, because that's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think I hate that you drink Corona beer. <laughs> Another question. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for once again allowing us to be here, God. Father, just do lift up the ones that lost loved ones, dear Lord. We have so many on our prayer list, dear Lord, that need, ask you to be with care and Father, dear Lord, to strengthen her and give her. Get her back to the, the health that she needs to be, to be with Kay. If she battles that long problem, dear Lord, and to be with <coughs> Amy, dear Lord, if she cares for her parents, dear Lord, the Meyer family, just ask you to continue to bless her and lift her up and give her the strength that she needs. I ask you to be with well, Sally and, and Glenn, sitting at the hospice house with them, dear Lord, with Danny and Vicky. Just a Whenever you call him home, dear Lord, just, I mean, I know that he's weak. Just ask that you continue, continue to strengthen him, dear Lord. Just ask that 
special prayer when you want to just not be here.